Hey, what's up, guys? It's time for another General Hospital review. And I didn't realize we were only going to get three episodes this week. <laughs> I didn't realize, I didn't know until Monday night my friend was telling me about that. And I'm like, oh, that sucks, stupid baseball. <laughs> but let's see if I will still talk as much as I would if it was five episodes. Yeah, timing. Oh, well, don't even tell the <laughs> timing, but the time is worth that. Okay. Anyways, and this is my second time doing this review. The first time, my nose is itching really bad, and it just got really, really bad. And then next thing you know, it's like, I don't know how long I was sneezing and scratching my nose for. So I was like, I'll just start this over again. So hopefully it does not do this again, especially since it's hella hot in my office. I don't know if you can tell that I'm sweating. <laughs> Anyway, it's not even hot outside. It's just hella hot in here for some reason. But anyways, um, let's get into the first thing I want to talk about. It's Sonny got rid of Gladys. Yes! Thank you, baby Jesus. <laughs> you guys know I cannot stand that bitch, and I'm so glad she is finally gone. <laughs> Lordy Jesus. Yeah, she was trying to pack up and leave town, but then Sam just like lit herself in the apartment. And Glass is like, Excuse you. Sam's like, I was not here. You didn't come answer. She's like, Because I didn't want to see you. <laughs> yeah, but Sam's just telling her, like, I know exactly what you were doing. You purposely put Sasha in Ferncliff so you can have all her money. And. Glass is like, I didn't do anything other than such. I'm leaving. And just as she was about to leave, try to leave, Sunny walks in. She looks like she's all scared. <laughs> and <laughs> Lordy, she tried so hard to lie and say that Sam doesn't know what she's talking about. You know, Sam was just trying to explain everything to Sunny. Sunny was just like walking around and she was trying to get Sunny on her side. And Sam's like, come on, Sonny. And because he was acting like he wasn't really listening to her. I didn't really believe what she was saying. And then Sonny was looking at the bass. He's like, are you going somewhere? And she's like, yeah, I was just going on a little vacation. He's like, well, you're Sasha's guardian. You can't really just up and leave. You need to be here just in case, you know, anything happens. And she's like, that's why I need to go. I need a little break, you know, so I can be refreshed or whatever. <laughs> so he's like, cut the bullshit, bitch. <laughs> basically, that's what he said. Basically, what he said. He's like, I know everything that you did. You know, Sasha wanted it in a conservatorship, but you wanted to keep it going so you could use her money to pay off your gambling debt. <laughs> and then she's like, oh, yes, gambling. Yes, it's an addiction. You know, I. You know, makes you do stuff that, you know, I wasn't in my, I didn't, wasn't controlling my actions, you understand? He's just like, stop whining. <laughs> and Sam's just like, you know, standing there. And she's like, oh yeah, and um, the drugs, Dr. Mountain Q gave Sasha, um, you messed with the drugs that she was taking. So that's why she, you know, was hallucinating and stabbed Cody. <laughs> so he was just like... <laughs> Sam, you know, time for you to go. Sam's like, you know, I'm watching a show. <laughs> hey, I know Sam, I wouldn't leave you there. But then she was like leaving and Sonny started taking off his jacket and stuff. He's like, oh shit. He about to like kill her or beat her ass. <laughs> I was like, I was straightening my hair. I was like putting my straightener down. I was like, oh my gosh, what are you about to do? <laughs> I was like, I've never been so focused. On a scene in a minute. <laughs> I was like, I was like watching it, but then, you know, he took that off, and I'm like, oh my gosh, what's about to happen? But it's like, no, he brought Frank in. I was like, oh my God, you gonna kill her? And Frank gonna dispose about it, but no. He just said that Frank is gonna take her back to Bridgeport, and she better not bring her ass back to Fort Charles. And if she ever even puts Porter in a slot machine, he's gonna know about it. <laughs> She's like, okay, I won't do anything else. <laughs> and she tried to take the luggage, and Sunny's like, oh, no, Sasha paid for that luggage. 
<laughs> so glad it's going back to Bridgeport with shit. Nothing. At least give her a toothbrush, you know? A hairbrush. Does she get to keep her phone? I don't know. Where is Bridgeport? I forgot where that was. She might be able to wear that coat. If it gets cold, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I was assuming it was New York, but I don't know. I didn't Google. Um, but I thought that was funny. So thank you, Sunny. You're my hero for getting rid of Gladys when nobody else could. <laughs> and then Gladys is gone, and so is Dr. Montague. <laughs> Yes, he was trying to kill Sasha. <laughs> First, he excused himself for her case to tell um, Janice that. I said I wasn't going to itch my nose again because that's what started the scene. <laughs> but anyways, he leaves and then um, calls Janice and said that he thinks he might have left a file there or something. So Janice goes and um, checks on that for him, and he comes in with a needle to give to Sasha to kill her ass, basically. Oh, damn. Now that I think about it, why, why did Dr. Monique want to kill her so bad? I mean, I know he wanted to um, get the money from Gladys, but he got the money. Um, I mean, now that I think about it, is Lena going to get her money back? Mm -hmm. Makes me wonder. But yeah, really, why did Dr. Rodicky want to kill her so damn bad? I don't know. But anyways, <laughs> yeah, it comes in with the needle, and Sasha, you know, is like, no, no more! <laughs> and she's just, like, trying to get away from him. She just throws a chair, like, nowhere near him. <laughs> just, like, way past him. And hits the wall, and like, yeah. Sasha, I'm going to work on your throw. <laughs> but anyways, um, just as he was about to stick her with this, somebody comes in. Um, yeah, he was saying that nobody's going to hear her. And so, like, so where was everybody else that day? I don't know. But luckily, it was Cody. I know that happened at the end of Monday's episode. Of course, we had to wait Thursday to find out who it was. But I was like, I bet she was Cody. But they're trying to throw, off, throw us off and maybe think that it wasn't Cody because we first saw the scene where Mac asked the cop to go look for Cody. <laughs> um, go, not go look for Cody. Go get Cody out of lockup. And the next thing we see Cody <laughs> is at Ferncliff. And I was like, oh, Lordy, did he break out of, out of police custody somehow? But no, we found out that Dante had signed him out in his custody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Cody was trying to save her and stuff. I was like, no, she was trying to take down a mad doctor. <sighs> but no, <laughs> um, Dr. Montague had the um, needle in her side. I was going to stick her if he had move out of her way. And then Jenna showed up. I was like, what are you doing, Dr. Montague? He's like, nothing, nothing for you to worry about. <laughs> But, you know, when he leaves, the better not sound any alarms or anything. Or Sasha's gonna get. <laughs> so, it's like, move that away. But then, you know, Sasha kicks him. Like, oh, next thing you know, Cody had him jacked up against the wall. I'm like, yeah, teamwork. Yeah, the needle fell on the ground and stuff. And Dante just comes around the corner. <laughs> it's like, where the hell have you been, Dante? <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> um... Dante saved Dr. Monique because Jeebus only knows what Cody was going to do to him. But yeah, Dante um, had asked Janice, you know, what was going on. Because um, Dr. Monique just said that Cody jumped him. And Janice was like, no, he was trying to kill Sasha. He had the needle. I forgot what he said that it was in there, but he's like, it was enough to kill her. So Dante arrested him and handcuffed him to the chair. Mac Daddy, his sexy ass. <laughs> he showed up, and they filled um, him in on everything that was going on. It's like, wow. <laughs> and um, Sasha is just thanking everybody for everything. And Dante's like, you know, Cody made a, um, 
she was thanking Cody and Dante, and Dante's like, if Cody made a good case for you, and Sam figured something was wrong in the beginning, and I was like, yeah, but, you know, Cody had to twist her arm, basically, to get her to help <laughs> but I'm glad that their plan didn't, um, mess up, because last week, it just looked like they just, like, fucked up their own plan, but I'm glad it came to you. I had this week, and I thought it was funny, Cody just, like, slipped in there. <laughs> That's what Monica keeps talking about. Oh, this boy, I could just, uh, excuse this all off or whatever. And Cody just, like, punches him in the stomach. <laughs> 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 Don't skate the Mac and just stand in there. So he's like... Bonnie's like, did you not just see what he did to me? And Dante's like, I didn't see anything, Mac. Did you see anything? And I was like, no, I didn't see anything. I'm like, teamwork. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for Sasha to kiss Cody. And I was like, that would have been a perfect moment for a kiss. But okay, I'm okay. I can patiently wait for whatever's going to happen with them. But they definitely need to be a couple. Like, seriously, they have this really hot couple vibe to them, I think, so. I think it could work. Um, I don't know. People get close to Sasha, die, so. I don't know, but. Well, die or just have really bad luck. But, um. <laughs> I, I want to see it. Do it, General Hospital. They have to do it now. Cody just went all through that, and they're not going to at least fuck shit. Anyways, <sighs> um, yeah, I guess I'll just go in the order that I took these notes so I don't forget. <laughs> but, um, Spencer and Trina are still in New York. Yeah, Spencer, um, took Trina on, like, this backstage, um, tour behind the gallery and see everything that happens put on, put, you know, in the gallery, you know, behind the scenes, VIP access kind of thing. Yeah, she compared it to VIP tickets to Taylor Swift concert. I'm like, I would love to go VIP with Taylor. T-Swift. Anyways, <laughs> so Trina thanks them by giving them some more loving. <laughs> I, I've lost count. Did it go like two, three rounds? <laughs> really christening that bed. Which is good, because who knows when they'll be able to get it on again once they get back to Port Charles. <laughs> but I love what he said when they're in bed. He said, you could play the parts of me I didn't know needed completed. So corny, but so romantic. Is it not romantic? <laughs> but yeah, but they really need to, um... Oh, yeah, she was asking how he um, was able to do that. He's like, I pulled three strings. So what are these strings you pulled? <laughs> but that was cute. But they really need to work on that after sex talk. Because the last round, they started talking about Trina's parents. I'm like, why am I bad? I don't talk about my parents. <laughs> but Trina did um, defend Portia saying she's just being... Um, Oh, Lordy. What's that word? <laughs> protective. That's it. She's just being protective. But she'd be more than that. Which I thought was funny. Because, you know, how she just went off on Anna. Because somebody, she thought somebody was targeting Anna. And that's how Curtis got shot. But she's, like, BFFing with Esme. He purposely went after Trina. Tried to ruin her life. And even drugged her. Just because Spencer liked her more. Yeah. I thought that was kind of I don't know, I was just thinking about that Thursday night when um, Spencer and Trina were talking. But, anyways. Yeah, they're on their way back to Port Charles. They act like they didn't want to go. I'm like, I didn't want, I wouldn't want to go back to all that hot mess back there either. <laughs> and Spencer was like, people are going to start to miss us. I was like, and? I would. Forget those. I'm just saying. But anyway, speaking of Anna, Anna and Valentine and Charlotte scenes. Oh my God, you see Charlotte's face when 
and then Valentine were talking. That shit was funny. <laughs> yeah, because um, Anna showed up at Valentine's house. <laughs> She's like, oh, why are you keeping this house a secret? And um, Anna admitted to him that she followed him that night um, <laughs> to the house. And I was like, yeah, that is that. I was like thinking that was the house that he went to that night that she followed him. I thought, um, she thought that he was going to meet. I thought she thought that he was going to meet. Because I thought it was like his connection at Pikeman or something. But I guess he was just really looking into buying a house for them. I don't know. But she didn't understand why he would keep it a secret. But um, I thought Charlotte came in. And the way she was looking at Anna. So fake. <laughs> this is so fake the way she was looking at it. But we got the whole flashback of Charlotte getting the letter from Valentine. Valentine. From Grandpa Victor. I just summed up the letter basically. Um, it said that Valentine has become weak and forgot how important family is because of his love for Anna. She's not who she says she is, and tell Charlotte she should use any weapon she can to get rid of Anna before Valentine dies. <laughs> and the tarot cards are supposed to help in some way, or whatever. I don't know. But I'm like, oh, Lordy. <laughs> she just believes all of that. And I guess she has a... um. Well, considering all the stuff that Valentine did, um, him and Anna did work together to take down Valentine. Valentine. All these damn B names. <laughs> Valentine and Anna did work together to take down Victor, and Valentine wasn't really sad that Victor was gone. <laughs> so now it makes me wonder, did, um, I guess no. So I was thinking Charlotte had something to do with you know, Anna being exposed, but then I'm like, no, nah, this probably was Victor, um, something in as well, or whatever. Um, but she was listening as Valentine was telling her that, um, he bought this house for them, um, so they could live together. I was like, what? And Charlotte's like, <sighs> She's about to pull out something and just like go after him with it. But Valentine says that he really needs to focus on Charlotte right now because, you know, he, you know, she's been living with Dante and then she was at the boarding school and it's like it's just a good time that he should be with her. And then uh, understand. She's like, you know, you love for your daughter. I've been her dad. So yeah, she left. And I'm like, Believe me, Anna, you should be glad that you're not there because your future stepdaughter is in our job. <laughs> then again, she is part casting, so. Yeah, but, um, Valentine did talk to Martin, and you know what? I totally forgot what Martin said. <laughs> but Valentine did fill him in about, um, what what was going on with Charlotte and everything. And I'll address and change it because I forgot what Martin said. <laughs> but I'm sure they're going to repeat that conversation. <laughs> Just like how Anna had the same conversation with Jordan and with Robert. Yeah, because she talked to Jordan on Monday and she asked about, you know, what's the dude doing out there? And Anna's like, you know, he's my bodyguard. Um, Sunny um, hired him, and Jordan's like, you know, what is the badass spy Anna Devane need a um bodyguard? <laughs> and then I told her she thinks that the sh um shooting at the Metro Court, you know, that was directed at Sunny, and the person that's going after her is more personal, just trying to get at her, basically. And that Valentine is full of lies. <laughs> and then on Friday's episode, she was talking to Robert, uh, basically the same exact name. And, and meant, but she mentioned about the house and stuff. And he was like, Valentine won't put you move into the house. 
<laughs> and it's like, I thought she didn't want me with Palpatine. Like, I don't, but, you know, you still have a right to choose where you live. <laughs> Instead of out here roughing it in a hotel. And she's like, room service is not exactly roughing it. <laughs> I was like, I would love some room service and maid service as well. If that's roughing it, then let me rough it, definitely. In a five-star hotel. <laughs> Yeah, but Robert's pissed. <laughs> Robert stays pissed, you know. Nobody's good enough as Anna. <laughs> but Anna did ask him if he could, um, if she could look into the WSB and see who possibly targeting her. I'm like, girl, the person's not in the WSB. <laughs> and Jordan did mention that, you know, the gun was, you know, Minded her that the gun was tied to the WSB and she has more ties to the WSB than Sonny does. Um, and then, you know, that makes me think again. Um, could Charlotte truly have really gone after <laughs> trying to shoot, shoot Anna? <laughs> That's, I, that would explain, you know, her missing, but Lord, they're just trying to ruin that child. <laughs> But, um, yeah, um, Nina came over to see him. I thought it was funny how, um, <laughs> happy Charlotte was to see me. But I was like, that was way different than how she reacted when she saw Anna. <laughs> but she still, uh, she, it's good that she still cares about Nina. And she wants to go to Europe together. <laughs> and Nina's like, oh, yeah, we can go. Let's bring Georgie, too. You know, be safe, sorry. <laughs> I was like, you know, you're afraid to go with her? I was like, she likes you. <laughs> so, Lordy, that just makes me scared. I'm like, are they going to set up for them to switch couples and Valentine and Anna be together? Um, Valentine and Nina be together and Anna and Sunny be together? I would turn off this damn soap up for the they did that shit. Oh, Lord, but Valentine, you know, he was talking to Nina, and he's like, is he wrong for keeping this from um, Anna? And Nina's like, you know, you can't get the cops involved right now. She's just a teenager. They think that they can get through. But, you know, right now, I'm going to go get married to Sunny, and then we'll see what's going on. <laughs> Basically what she said. <laughs> but Valentine did call for help. He called, um... Lauren said that they need some um he needs some help with Charlotte. So see how that goes. Um but Anna uh, Laura was going to take a break from looking for Nicholas. She wants to still go look for Nicholas, but Kevin is like, um we know that Nicholas is alive and um it's obvious he doesn't want to be found and it just hurts him to say that she's looking for Nicholas. You know, because he don't want to be found. Basically, which I definitely understand where he's coming from. But, you know, Laura was just kind of sad. She feels bad that she has left Nicholas with the cassette eyes. Uh, he's like, you know, you needed to get away. You had a wish. She's like, well, I should have snuck away with my baby. I'm like, I don't know. I still think that you would have had trouble with Nicholas even, <laughs> even if um, you did take him away. Even if he took him away with you, I think he'd still probably be a pain in the ass. Because he still has Cassidine blood in him. But think about it, this my girl. He's set for life. He didn't have to pay for college or anything. <laughs> Ugh, I'm saying. But I understand where Kevin is coming from. But, you know, they had to take a vacation, so that's why they were looking. <laughs> but I still say Laura needs to beat his ass with a plunger when she sees him. Especially if he has something to do with um, Ava going by. But, you know, if he did have something with um, to help with Ava being kidnapped, then um, <laughs> um, payback's a bitch. But I need to see more of that. But, yeah, um, Laura hasn't come back yet, so I guess next week. We'll never know, because there was two episodes that we missed this week. Could explain what happened to Ava. Yes, I'm going to keep saying that. But, um... Oh, lordy. 
Oh, I'm not. I don't know. I thought I had more to talk about, but there's um, there's a few more things to talk about. Um, yeah. So they get married in Puerto Rico. <laughs> my people acting like they don't want to go. <laughs> the sending invited Michael and Willow, and Michael and Willow's like, oh, I don't want to go because you know we're gonna be like people gonna be looking at us and stuff. I'm like, it's Sunny and Nina's wedding. And it's a free trip to Puerto Rico. Why the hell would you care why you're going down there? I would happily take a free trip to Puerto Rico. I would love to go to the wedding. You know, especially if there's lots of margaritas in place. I don't care. Plus, I think it's going to be like a um, drama wedding. <laughs> it's like Michael's going to find out, like, right before the wedding that Nina's the one that ratted out Carly and June. I just have a feeling. It has to be. It has to be. That has to be the moment right there in Puerto Rico. Just drop her ass in the water. <laughs> no, it's not that serious. Nina ratting out two criminals. That's, that's not that serious. It's petty. Hell, petty. But not that serious. But yeah, Christina. Yeah, it's Christina acting more mad that um Dante couldn't come to Sunny there, but. And something got Dante has a job, he can't just up and leave. He's got a lot of cases to deal with, so whatever. And I think about it. Is something gonna invite Molly and TJ too? <laughs> Molly is his niece. I know. I don't know if anybody remembers, but that's his niece still too. So <clears throat> Yeah. Um and Sunny Ask Alexis to help um, use her paper to find out about the um, the judge in Drew's case. So he's trying, the judge is trying, yeah, I talked about that last week. The judge was trying to get a seat on the bench. So he's probably, probably used um, Drew's case to do that. So I guess they'll find that out. She, um, Alexis was talking to Gregory about that. And, um, she found Gregory's, um, bucket list. <laughs> Look at your notes, Tori. It says right here, Alexis finds Gregory's bucket list. <laughs> he has to mix in some papers that he want, um, some articles she wanted him to, he wanted her to look at. Yeah, so, <laughs> she's like, oh, we should try some of these things. And he was talking about skydiving. And Alexis was like, oh, like no. <laughs> so they did hot yoga. Like that um, that's on your to do list? Especially since he's having like the the hand trimmers and stuff. I don't know. I guess maybe the stretching helps the body. I don't know, but they're making me sweat <laughs> watching them do that. Unless it's like, oh no, we're done with that. <laughs> yeah, I thought that was cute. But um but yeah, I was like, okay. <laughs> and then Finn treating Chase for, um, he got some pepper spray in his eyes. <laughs> what? <laughs> You're supposed to pepper spray the criminal. What are you doing? <laughs> but, um, yeah, he was treating him for that. So he looked like he was, like, crying and all sad and stuff. Um... Yeah, and Tracy yeah, has showed up talking to Finn that she's back on the hospital board. So Finn's like, oh, I have to go pretend I'm back at, you know, I'm doing some work or whatever. And she see, turns around and sees Chase sitting on a bench and think that something bad happened in Brooklyn or his dad fell. And Chase is like, wait, what? <laughs> and she's like, oh, your father has MLS. ALS. ALS. <laughs> and Finn's like walking down the stairs and he overhears he's like <laughs> yeah so <clears throat> she um that's kind of messed up that she told him but you know is there was no reason for Gregory to have not told him you know I already told Finn might as well tell Chase too yeah especially since he told Tracy too you know all these pe people that aren't Related to you, no, but you don't. <laughs> Anyways, but um, 
Finn's like, yeah, I missed that. He had known us for a few weeks. And it's like, really? The dad tells you the son that abandoned him, and not the son that was always there for him. He just walks out and just, like, falls down outside and cries. And I'm like, oh, Lord. Grandma, so. Yeah, it's like. But I thought that that was just some made up drama, just for Chase to find out. <laughs> it's like, it was like just, just like having him happen to get pepper sprayed. That's how you get him to go to the hospital, just so Chase could tell, um, tell him that he has ALS, that Gregory has ALS. But that was just fake drama, and so needed to just. It's, it was just one of those scenes to. Where and flick just basically tried to make drama where there is no drama needed. Just they could have found another better way for Chase to have found out about the ALS in a bad way. But that was just a really forced way of doing it. That's the word for it. Forced. Very forced way to have um Chase find out the truth. But anyways, that's all I had to say about this week's episodes. What thirty minutes? I think that's my sh shortest review in a long, long time. But anyways, let me know in the comments below what did you enjoy this week and didn't enjoy. And if you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe and share this video. Even if it's just to make fun of the fact that I'm glad Gladys is gone. <laughs> anyways, enjoy your weekend. And if you haven't already, check out last week's. The highlight reel is the show where I talk about the winners, the losers, the best and the worst of last week's episode, um, episodes of, um, include the other two soaps I cover. I, I had to do better in my head. Anyway, <laughs> I talk about all that about General Hospital, Days of Our Lives, and The Bold and Beautiful as well. And I will talk about this week's episodes on Sunday. That video will be posted Sunday afternoon, so check that out as well. And I will see you guys next week for the reviews and then Sunday for the weekly highlights. I don't know. I'll work on that um, promoting later. Anyways, thank you for watching. Love you guys.